Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. On Sunday, we received some great news from Sterner. The full United States campaign has been released in a patch update for the game, along with many, many other changes. Now, I do want to preface this with, this game is in early access, and along with every patch release comes a lot of bugs that we as a community have to find and work out. But that being said, this is an incredibly exciting time, because this means that the game most likely will release in that summer time frame on Steam. And I know there are many, many people out there that have been eagerly awaiting for this game to drop on Steam. And I feel like this is very, very good news. I thought it might not even release until 2025 on Steam, but the devs have put their heads down and they have really worked hard in getting this game to where it is now. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have the entirety of the United States campaign. And this is going to be basically the entire game that is going to be released onto Steam. And then later on, from what I understand, the British campaign will come as basically a DLC. Or if you were an early backer and bought it on the uh, Exola launcher, then you'll receive that British campaign for free as sort of a thank you. But let's dive on into this patch notes. Keep in mind that I'm not going to read it verbatim. There's plenty of things that also need tweaking already. There's plenty of bug reports that the devs and Panda Kraut are pouring through. And I have a lot of faith in the devs that they're going to get things right. So far, they've been very, very receptive to player feedback. And I can't express how amazing that is as a player. I think these devs are absolutely amazing for not just listening and taking our feedback, but then implementing it into the game. And you'll see some of those things. Um, I'll, I'll show off a few things that I personally have been talking about frequently that many of you say that I complain about far too often. You're probably right. I probably do complain about certain things far too often. I'll definitely work on that in future episodes, try to you know limit that sort of stuff to something very, very minor. But in this video, we're just going to go through what's exciting, what's new, what's coming out, and then a little snippet from Sterner, which has us really, really excited. So, what does this patch include? Well, the entire American campaign. And I want to really hone in on that. The entire American campaign is basically going to be the entirety of the base game. There will be a British campaign, but I must stress this. It will be a DLC later. That is what Sterner has said previously. He hasn't flat out said the words DLC, but he's basically confirmed it by saying those of us that bought the game on the Exola launcher will receive the British campaign for free, whereas those who purchase this game on Steam, they will have to buy the British campaign later. Now, other, th other features that have been added. A new economic rebalance. Sterner admits, still needs some work. I would agree, but, you know, that's what early access is for, is figuring out, you know, is something too hard, too easy, just right? Is something, like, pushed too far or not pushed enough? That's what early access is for, and the fact that Sterner straight away says still needs some work lets us know that they understand that this is something that's going to need balancing, and I absolutely love that. Also, natives are now in the game. And by natives, I mean the Native Americans. Um, looks like it's mostly like the Iroquois, maybe some others, but I'll show off some units later on. Also, European nations are in the game, and that includes Spain and France. I think those are the only two European nations we have in the game, but I could be wrong, but those are the only two that really make sense. And we, we definitely have seen Spain and France um, in various previous videos, and then people that have really got their hands into the game already, they have seen uh, Spanish and French fleets engaging with the British. So let's uh, dive right on into the patch notes. As I said, I won't be reading this verbatim, but I'll try to go over the exciting things and show them off. So the very first thing is a change in mechanics for project boosting using your reputation. Now, this is a save game from the campaign that I just did, so this isn't you starting over a new campaign. 
which I highly, highly recommend doing. There's a lot of things that are bugged if you don't start over the campaign, and a lot of things that aren't implemented. But I just thought I would show this out. Usually, every single one of these technologies shows you how many reputation it would take in order to finish that uh, technology with reputation. You see, I have 102, so usually I could do a lot of these. However, I only have field operations available to me to fast track, and it takes 14 reputation to do so. So this is one of the changes they made. You can now boost only at the end of a project when 20 days are left and the cost per day was increased too. Now what I think they're trying to accomplish here is to slow down the pace at which you unlock certain technologies because you could really cheese it before. Is this good? Is it bad? We'll see. But I understand the concept behind it that it stops you from just really rushing through technology. If you look at my major military theories in Commander-in-Chief, I've almost unlocked the entire tree as of April 10th, 1777. For Chief of Intelligence, it's almost the same thing. I've unlocked a good portion of it. For Artillery Chief, everything that's important to me unlocked. For the Quartermaster Chief, you can see... It's just the same story over and over again where I have probably unlocked too much of the technology tree and this is the dev's way of slowing things down. Something that people have been asking for over and over again is a reduced frequency of sea invasions by difficulty. I think this is super important because people who play on easy, they really don't understand the sea invasion mechanics where somebody on normal they can probably deal with them, but they're still quite unsure. And then the hard and ultimate players, they kind of understand the mechanics a lot more and are more capable of dealing with them. So I really like the concept that there is more incentive for newer players to play on easy because uh, sea invasion frequency is sort of linked to difficulty. Also, they note this only works for... Uh, for um, new saves or invasions that are generated on existing saves moving forward, not ones that are already um, like in the works. So for example, in the background, you might not know that an invasion is coming, but there's like an invasion trigger and it's already happened, but it takes a long time to get to the colonies. So there might be one on the way if you start up an existing save. My recommendation, start a new campaign. I don't find these patches to be save compatible, even though they technically are. They also reduce the frequency and increase requirements to generate King's Fury. So King's Fury is an ability that I've talked about a few times here. And you'll see, um, if you look at this map here, I have left this entire northeastern corner of Massachusetts and part of New Hampshire with the British. And how King's Fury used to work is that if you controlled more than 80% of the entire settlements, King George would get really angry and the King's Fury event would proc. And it would be three different invasions. Usually one was by land somewhere over like Fort St. John's or Fort Saratoga. And then there would be two sea invasions coming. And they were very large and they could happen quite frequently. From what I understand, per Pandacrout, it looks like you now have to control 90% or more of the settlements and that that frequency of events has decreased. So I like that. Still not my favorite mechanic in the game as I think you as a player can kind of cheese it, but I completely understand the mechanic and I greatly appreciate that they have, you know, reduced the frequency and increased the requirements for it. Also, another thing to do with invasions that I just think is absolutely amazing is they added a sea invasion warning message that displays 10 days before the invasion appears on the map. Now this only applies to actual sea invasions, not like reinforcements or other troop deliveries, just sea invasions. And this can get a little bit complicated. Maybe we'll go into uh, more depth in a different video, but basically there are many, many different types of events that the British get, and a lot of people lump them all into an invasion but there's really only one type of, type of invasion. It's usually like 7,000 plus men led by a general. And the message clearly states invasion aimed at such and such territory. So that is what they're talking about here. Uh, just random bug fixes like fixed skirmishers not holding fire. 
displayed an exhausted notification if the unit can't charge or chase. I think this is amazing. It's such a small thing, but uh, sometimes you're like, why, why can't my unit charge or chase? Oh, they're exhausted. You have to be watching that little uh, flag in the bottom left corner to understand that your guys, your guys' condition is low. So I think that is great. We already went over full U.S. campaign, end game logic and result calculation. So it was already in the game, and I'll show you where it's this campaign progress bar. So here you can see I have 273 victory points, but it wasn't really fleshed out. It was just kind of a placeholder. So it sounds like they have fleshed out this more so that there's more of a logic behind actually winning the campaign. And I look forward to understanding how that works. They've also changed fixed stolen ship price. I've seen a couple screenshots. I'll try to post them up on here for you guys. But basically, capturing British ships, it can still be lucrative, but it's nowhere near as lucrative as it was before. Basically, what they've done here is they've made it to where you don't have to like go all in on the Navy to win the campaign. Because what you would do before is go all in on your Navy, capture enemy ships, bankroll your entire economy that way, farm rep that way. And to me, it kind of lost focus of what the actual game is about. And that is the American Revolution and the ground battles. Yes, there were naval battles sort of in the American Revolution, but the American Navy wasn't really a thing. It was so minute in comparison to what the to the British had, and uh, it was mostly like little lake battles in Lake Champlain and uh, other places where the British could get their forces up the river into a lake. So there weren't really large-scale combats on the high seas because the Americans just didn't have the ships to do that. They didn't really create much of a navy until the war of 1812 and even then by like world standards it really wasn't anything they had like 12 total frigates um or raided ships i should say so um i, I like that they're kind of de-emphasizing the navy naval part of it and uh with france and spain in the game they might need to do some balancing here but there really isn't a need to go all in on the Navy because those guys will start absolutely destroying the British fleets. And I'll show a picture here that uh, one of my uh, friends on Discord has posted of, you know, like the amount of Spanish and French that have been helping him out in the campaign. Uh, they also fix reinforcement and tactical battle. Don't really know what that is at the moment. Um... From what I understand, it might be something like the reinforcements don't automatically move into the center of the map. Um, they also made more performance improvements. Uh, there's still more to do there. Early access game, you know, part of early access is always like continuing optimization, and that's always going to be something hard. I pointed out where there's some flaws, like when your artillery shatters and you get 9,999 artillery pieces i believe they have fixed that don't quote me on that but everything i've been told is that they fixed that and then there's just a lot of maps that they keep adding into the game that need further optimization they know that they just need us to point out when there are issues in the game so they can actually pinpoint them and work on those issues so just keep that in mind if you're a backer use this report f11 feature it really really helps out the devs other features, better visualization of capturing, looting, or destroying locality slash village. So I think that has to do with when, say you have a battle at Albany, and you destroy the forces, and there's all this like loot around, and then you're trying to capture Albany itself. Sometimes it's hard to see the loot, and sometimes it's hard to see like the progress bar on Albany. So I believe that is what they're talking about there. I haven't really tested this so far, so take that thought with a grain of uh, grain of salt, but I believe that's what they're doing. Also, better visualization of surrendered units. Haven't seen that in play yet, but, you know, any better vi visualization is appreciated. Now, they also reworked low-rank officers. So now they're called specialists, and they're also required for town buildings. So before, you had low-rank officers up here in this specialist report. You can see... I have a ton, late game, whatever. But now your specialists are used for more than just your military. 
if I go down to, let's say, Fort Penn, and I want to build a building, you can see here that a carpenter shop also takes three specialists to build. Recruiting house, two specialists. Church, two specialists. So there's more things like that. You can see here I've got more things to unlock, and there's different amounts of specialists that each building takes. I think that makes sense. I like that it's now called a specialist report. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense to people. This is probably one of the most confusing parts of the game for early um for for newer players playing in the early game is like why am i always out of low rank officers and how do i go about it now it's called a specialist report hopefully it makes a bit more sense to people but i can definitely see that this will probably be something that needs more and more work in the future but i do like this concept i'm i, I have to do a playthrough to see how how rough this is because you do run out of low rank officers quite easily in the early game, and most people just spam schools everywhere to try to mitigate that. Now I don't have any footage showing these off, but they added market buildings that produce pure income, so it's just going to be like one of these buildings, build it up, and all it does is produce income, which I think is probably a desperately needed feature of the game. I would also like for them to eventually increase the amount of slots we have available to build all of these buildings because I think we are getting a little spread thin on the buildings, but, you know, that's something that we as players just need to give feedback to the devs that, hey, there's a lot of buildings to build, and even our specialized areas are struggling with the amount of buildings. Why not link something like the level of the fort or the level of the town hall to how many buildings you have? Or under um, construction management, you have this infrastructure or logistics thing or infrastructure under logistics and i think that this would be a great way to also increase the number of buildings you can have like better infrastructure allows more buildings that's something that i think um what do you guys think do you think that five buildings really only four buildings is fine for a settlement or would you like a way to have the number of buildings you're able to build linked to either infrastructure or the level of your town hall or maybe even the level of your workforce or population that's just my thought there but i do appreciate them adding a market building that just produces pure income they also added tax officer buildings i'm not entirely sure what these do yet they have implemented taxes into the game but how it actually works we'll have to see and then they, a rebalance of provision production and buildings that can produce provisions. So going back to what I just said, they've added three new buildings where we're getting pretty thin or, or, or spread too thin on what we can do with our buildings. So that's why I really think it would be nice if we could get some more building slots, even if it was really expensive to add more building slots. I think that would be something great for late game. They also did a rebalance of resource production and added a complexity of mining that will affect the extracted volume. So if you go into your colonies management, um, this isn't going to work because this is a previous patch saved game. But you'll when you go under here, you'll have your funding, your taxes, and your mining expenses. So right now you can see that I've got funding 1,090. Uh, presumably I can tax my settlements at a percentage. I think that does affect your loyalty though, which makes sense. It's the American Revolution. They started the entire war on the premises of no taxation without representation, and now they're taxing themselves. Are they represented? Who knows? But that's the American irony for you there. But you'll also see mining expenses. So mining is going to cost money. You can also state the resource production and mining. So you can change these percentages and presumably that will change the amount of money it costs. So if you look here, it says 100% is minus 595 in my resources, even though it's not implemented yet. It doesn't tell me what the other percentages are, but you have 100%, 50%, 25% are off. So a little bit more agency in how much you mine in a region. And I do like that because, you know, sometimes you get too many resources and... Sometimes you just need more money. You can always sell resources, but they don't exactly sell for a great amount. Now, something they have added to the game, which is getting a little bit mixed results on 
the Discord is that unit losses will affect hometown loyalty. So if I click on this Dragoon unit here, you'll see right uh, next to the name of the regiment is unit's home region is New Haven. Casualties will lead to a loss of loyalty in this region. Now we all completely agree that the loyalty mechanic in the game should be expanded upon and that the concept is cool. Problem is the implementation is pretty rough at the moment because basically what happens in the campaign is you really only have three places that you recruit from and it's generally New Haven, Hartford, and Boston. You don't really recruit from anywhere else because in order to make the best recruiting area you really need something like a recruitment house, an armory, a warehouse, all of those features. Now you're absolutely going to need like a church and a printing press and those settlements are going to take a massive hit in loyalty. A couple people on Discord were showing off that Hartford was down to 27% loyalty because of losses from battle, and it wasn't like they were losing battles, they were crushing the British, but because of the amount of casualties they were taking in battle, Hartford was losing loyalty. So, as we said, like the idea and concept, but I think there needs to be a pro for this along with the con. I would really like to see this, that if your unit performs well in a battle, you gain loyalty, and if your unit performs poorly in a battle, you lose loyalty. I think that would make a lot more sense to me, and I hope that's something they move forward with. Panda Kraut has already compiled a bunch of, um, we'll, we'll call it complaints about this mechanic to the devs, and told the devs that initial feedback on this mechanic is pretty divisive at the moment, um, and I wouldn't even say divisive, I would just say it's pretty negative at the moment, and that's unfortunate because I do think the concept is good, I just think the execution could be a lot better. Going along with loyalty and economics, um, they're rebalancing loyalty flow, not really sure what that means at the moment, they're also rebalancing taxes and the impact on loyalty, I mentioned that above, I think people are saying that like a 0.2 tax rate or 2% tax rate decreases loyalty by 2%. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but basically the more you tax your men, the harsher the loyalty impact on your towns. They also added a button for fast switch between players' towns. I don't necessarily know what that is at the moment. I think it's uh, this button here, right above the flag, there's a left and right arrow. So I'm assuming this is the fast switch that they meant. I've never noticed this before, but to be honest, I've never looked for it before. And then going back to, they said tactical reinforcements on the map. Fixed an issue with reinforcements when it moved to the center of tactical map. Um, that's just a nice little bug fix. And something that we all love, added more tactical maps and their size is increased for massive battles. I've shown this before, but I'll show it again old versus new size map. Now not every map is going to be the new size map, like little tiny engagements don't need a map that big, but this will be absolutely amazing for those like 10,000 plus strong engagements. It'll, it'll be a godsend and I can't wait to do a major battle on one of these maps. Also just some minor changes, improvements, and reward hints and events, rework of battle flow on the global map, not exactly sure what that means per se, um, obviously it's when two armies engage each other and the fighting, fighting flag comes up and you click on that, or fighting circle comes up, click on that and your two armies. So I guess something is better there. We'll have to see what that means. Lots of balance work in tactical battles. I've heard that the British are tougher. The AI is better. I like that. I'm always for making the AI better. I, I, I love things like that. Um, Improvements of research trees for HQ departments. We'll have to go over that in a different video. There's a ton of new research. Uh, they, they've basically rehauled the entire research tree. You can't see it in uh, in a current save file. You'd have to start a new campaign. So really enjoy that. Now they've added natives to the game. And I do want to show that off. So if I click on New Town, I can hire some mercenaries. And right now I can hire bowmen and musketmen. I can't hire the cavalry because my tension is greater than 20%. You can see these are the amounts. That's just uh, 
this create this regiment and then can i choose their weapons i don't know um this unit seems absolutely bonkers this this commander seems fantastic and then not enough ammo not enough provisions we can also add uh, perks to them looks like the standard perks uh doesn't look like you can edit the unit not entirely sure there um we'll we'll see if we can edit the unit but I, i'm guessing you cannot edit the unit and then they do have a hometown there too so kind of cool to see that 320 um i would love to be able to dive into that a little bit more well we'll definitely play some battles i would also love these guys in the custom battles too because that would be absolutely fantastic we went over them adding european nations such as spain and france multinational tactical battles i've gone over that in a previous video but basically the um like the spanish and the french can help you on battles but it looks like the ai takes control of their troops native tribes mercenaries that can be hired i just showed you that and many other fixes improvements and of course new bugs because every time you add new stuff to a campaign you're clearly going to have new bugs added to a campaign that's just how it works so i I say this all the time, I just always want to reiterate, game is in early access, so there's going to be bugs, there's going to be features that don't work, that are imbalanced. Um, the devs will try their best to balance them out, but we have such an amazing opportunity as a community to make this game great, and it's via that report F11. F11. It's via the fact that they have a Discord and they have a feedback forum, they have a bug forum. And you can post there, you can engage with the community, and you can discuss things that you like, don't like, or have questions about, like, is this a bug or is this a feature? Absolutely fantastic. And as I said, point out on a lot of this thing, the devs are listening to us and they are making changes. For the thing that I am absolutely most excited about, it's not in this patch, but it's something the devs are working on in the future. Sterner left us a message. Hello again, Generals. After the release of Backer Build 3, we would like to share our future development plans. Number one. And this is absolutely number one. If you've watched my videos, you know this is the thing I gripe about the most. This is the thing that you guys complain about, that I complain about too much. Um, and your complaints are legitimate. I definitely complain about this way too much. Number one is Troop Deployment Stage. You'll be able to move and change your companies before sta starting a battle in a limited area. Hallelujah. Holy cow. I've been wanting this so bad. Now, from what I understand, it the limited areas are going to be based upon where your guys are on the strategic map. I'm perfectly fine with that. As long as I get to move my guys, move my cannons back, get my guys in a line, uh, organize my troops just a tiny bit better... I am so happy. I can't tell you how excited this one makes me. If you ask me, like, my number one want in this game, it has to be that, or it has to be a change in how battles start on the strategic map, but I link these hand in hand. Um, number two is dividing the region panel into a region panel and a locality panel to improve management and vis visualization of their status. So I'm assuming that is probably the colonies management i'm not entirely sure either that or it's of this we'll have to see what he means by this but just anything that makes the game easier to manage the better they're also starting work on the british campaign and related mechanics interface and content I'm going to say this once again the british campaign is not going to be part of the core game it is going to effectively be a dlc I that makes a lot of sense to me. I know that might ruffle some people's feathers, but um, for somebody who's backed the game, I appreciate that they are going to give everybody that purchased the game, like outside of Steam, free access to the British campaign. Uh, number four, you always like to see it further balance of improvements. Number five, always love to see it AI improvements. Number six, this goes without saying bug fixes, performance improvements, and other game related improvements. And number seven, many other things to be discovered or invented. I love that Sterner has, you can tell he has a sense of humor in this. He understands that every time they implement something new, 
they've broken something, they've created a new bug, or a new bug will be found. That's just the way gaming goes, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one going over what is new to the game. I can't express how exciting it is to finally have essentially the full game in the full US campaign and that they are starting work on the next stages, which includes the British campaign. I imagine though that they are just slammed with bug reports at the moment. I don't know if I'm going to put out a let's play of this anytime soon. I kind of want a patch to come out for some of the major bugs that people have found, but I'm also toying with the fact of either doing a let's play or doing more of like a narrative style let's play where we kind of go through the life of General Quicksilver through the American Revolution and kind of go over the key moments of the campaign in sort of like a four-part series. Let me know what you guys would prefer if you want me to do another let's play with live commentary taking into consideration that I will try not to harp on the same thing over and over again because I understand that drives some of you insane um, and we're just going to have fun with this playthrough and it will be a blast. So let me know your thoughts. How excited are you for the entire US campaign? How excited are you for the future of this game? Have you bought the game from the Exola launcher or are you waiting for Steam? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer for there. I definitely recommend people that want a more polished product wait for Steam. For people that like to delve into the game, get into the nitty gritty, find bugs, report bugs, buy it on the Exola launcher and you'll be rewarded with essentially free DLC for the British campaign. Join their Discord. There's a link in the description below. Talk to other players, talk to alpha testers, talk to um, various different influencers that are on there. Talk to Panda Kraut, who is the man, the myth, the legend. He does so much work for this. He is the creator of their Discord. He moderates that Discord. He is absolutely amazing. He deserves so many kudos and so many props. He definitely takes so many of the more crap bug reports and works on fixing them. And by crap bug reports, I mean things like, hey, Panda Kraut, this unit has the wrong model. Hey, Panda Kraut, this like minor tiny interaction isn't working right. He goes in and fixes, does the dirty work. I absolutely love that. Give him a thanks on Discord, shout him out. I always like to shout him out in my videos because he's an awesome human being. Anyways, that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. I greatly appreciate all the feedback you guys give. I love all the comments that you leave on the videos, and I just love the overall engagement. As always, guys, until next time.